Hi there, this is a response to your video, Laura Layla, called A Question for Women. Sorry about the noise in the washing machine in the background. Yeah, I'm obviously I'm not a woman, so I'm not speaking with any great authority on that topic, and I'm not really speaking for all men either. It's just a, a personal perspective, really. But it, but it seems to follow on some of the, the stuff I've been thinking about recently to do with objects, objectification, the value of objects, what kinds of objects we produce when we do objectify, you know, metaphorically and literally. You know that whole that whole set of stuff really because in principle you know there wouldn't be a problem with seeing another person as an object depending on how we regard that object and whether we um treat that object you know how we how we treat that object that once we've created it um the problem with with creating some um, some a person primarily as a visual object as i was trying to get out in a previous video is that necessarily visualizing and creating a uh, rendering a person as a visual image pushes them outside of the body you know because that's what visual vision does it it separates and it excludes and it places a person at a safe remove so i think inherent in the kind of visual uh, the kind of ocular process of objectification there is that pitfall you know which is easy to get over i think because once you get to know people of course you're not you, you don't know them visually you, primarily visually you know them in all kinds of other ways don't you? so um, but 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 an appeal to a to a primarily primarily visual form of objectification does carry that pitfall which as i say i think it's possible to get over i think that's particularly a problem if it's exacerbated by existing power relations which many people would say are in place in a in what people would i guess would refer to as a, as a kind of paternalistic or a um a male-centered society you know if if you do think that is the case that we've got that uh, i know some people don't but um but yeah i mean if there's already a, an object if there's already a sense of power differentials which can be exacerbated and reinforced by the the distinction that ocularity and visual separation produces then again that, that i can see why that might be a bit of an issue um and then there's, that, there's this thing about what kind of an object is being produced. And here, I suppose, I'm borrowing from your comments to do with uh, cosmetic surgery, makeup, certain kinds of clothing that uh, women wear um, or, or want to wear, or seem to wear, or encouraged to wear, whatever, you know, sort of sluttish fashion or whorish fashion, I think is the word you, you used. You know, I, I, on, on a purely personal level, I have no problem with that. You know, the more sluttish, the better, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, on a, on, on a, purely visual level but um, but there is a problem with it in terms of what those fashions are about because female fashion quite often and you know any of the footage from the slut walks recent slut walks seems to bear this out female fashion always seems to be about disempowerment and I mean kind of literal disempowerment almost disabling in some ways you know high heels are designed to disable and prevent you from walking properly it seems to me I mean they do other things as well they make they make the shape of the silhouette particularly attractive but they also cripple you, don't they? I mean, they, they stop you walking fast. Um, you couldn't walk through the mud you walked through if you were wearing, um, you know, st stilettos, could you? Um, a lot of the uh, the kind of corseting and squeezing and shaping of, 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 of you know, that, those kind of garments seem to be about a, a certain kind of disabling. Um, and even things like a scooped neckline you know, it seems to be about vulnerability and demonstrating a kind of vulnerability. I know it's also about alluding towards the breasts, all those things. But there's a certain kind of vulnerability being suggested there. So, so the implicit in some of the fashion, I think, and sluttish fashion particularly, and perhaps why it's so attractive, is because it's uh, it's it it produces that kind of the hallmarks, the, the, the signs of, uh, as I say powerlessness and disability and fallenness you know what i mean fallenness a lot of female fashion looks like it's half fallen off you you know what i mean a lot of the the, the, um, the shoulders are, are designed to slip you know what i mean the neckline is designed to slip the shoulder so it looks like it's constantly falling off or looks like it's about half been ripped off half the time you know what i mean so it, it, it seems to be dramatizing a certain kind of um, handing over of power which, I, as I say, I, uh, I I don't have a big problem with. I mean, as, as a piece of theatre, it's, it's absolutely fine. And on a purely personal level, of course, it's quite erotic. But um, I can see why many people would have a problem with that.
particularly as I say if it's augmented and reinforced by these other things by the the um, the, the power differentials which might already be there in a society and the uh, uh, the exclusionary gaze which pushes the person away you know what I mean so you put all that together into a kind of perfect storm and you, what you get is a woman drag, wearing sluttish dresses at, placed at some distance in a negative power relationship and what you got there I think is a recipe for a kind of misogynistic relationship um, it, it, I think it's yeah I don't think it's entirely down to women to band together and stop dressing like tarts I don't want you to do that. That would be a shame. Um, I can if you want, but um, you know, I think it's, it's, I think it's, I think it's a, a broader um, project. Make sense? I don't know.